welcome back to another video in this series of the scales problem. Right now we're going to be addressing the scales solution.java class, right? And we're going to be finishing that off so we're ready to move on to the main class where we're going to be looking at our optimization algorithm. That means in this video, specifically, we're going to be attacking the random binary string. So before I give you the answer, um, just take a minute to pause the video to have a go yourself. So what we've got, we've got an integer n, which re represents the length of the um, array that we're looking at. And we need to create a binary string that's random of that length. I'd like you guys to know also before you start that, that within the CS2004 class, we have a method called static public int UI. In this method, we have the ability to create a, uh, to um, return a random number between A and B, right? So you can specify what those random numbers, what those limits are going to be. And this method will return that random value for you, right? So just bear in mind, just think about how you're going to call that, right? Within your scale solution, think about how you're going to call that and how you're going to um, use that within creating a random binary string. So just pause the video now and just have a go yourself. Right guys, I uh, hope you um, found that you actually uh, found success in doing that. So this is the code. So what we're doing is we're creating our empty string, right? That was already given to us. And we're creating a for loop between zero and the length of the array that we're looking at, right? But we're just doing one less than that. Why? Because we're starting from index zero, right? Which means that if we were just going straight to the length n, that would be out of bounds of the indexes of the um, of what we're looking at, right? So we're just doing one less than that. That's why we've got i less than n. So what we're creating is a new value, right? Which is going to be our random value. Um, and we're calling the UI method, like I said before, from the CS2004 class using this syntax. And we're creating a value between zero and one, right? And now we're creating, we're using that, we're creating a new string. And uh, what we're using for this string for is to create a two string of that value up here, right? Note that this is an integer and what we want is to add values to a string. That's why we use this integer dot two string method. What that turns, what that does is literally as it says here is it turns our integer into a string, right? And just make sure you put the, uh, your integer value in here and that's what it's going to give this uh, value as. And then literally after that, it's simple as within the for loop, adding this new string that used to be an integer to your blank string that you created at the top over here and then returning that string in the end. So that is literally as complex as the binary, random binary string goes. So uh, if you were successful in doing that, then fantastic. But if not, then just have a quick look at the code and make sure you understand it before we move on. Right, the next one I wanna have a look at is the scales fitness, right? So this is our fitness function. I don't know if you remember when we mentioned that in a previous video where this is what we're gonna be doing for our fitness in this specific case, right? Getting the left-hand side and the right-hand side and uh, doing a math.absolute, so modulus, and then subtracting both sides uh, to gauge the fitness of it. Um, that's exactly what we're gonna be looking to do over here. So uh, what, we've been, what we've been given so far is if the size of the um, array list of weights that we get is smaller then the length of our binary string, right, then we're returning minus one. Why are we doing that? Because if the array of weights that we get is smaller than our number of binary uh, digits, then what could end up happening is assume that we have a, a zero right here. There's going to be an empty slot where there's no weight that's assigned to this zero right here. And that's going to be an assignment that that is assigned to no weight. So what we want to do is remediate for that kind of an error happening by returning minus one. We're also creating a left-hand side which is equal to zero and a right-hand side which is equal to zero. We are taking in the type double, so we have double values here, right? And then we know that the length of our string is given by n. So given these uh, values right here, and the fact that we're returning the left-hand side minus the right-hand side, give it a go to see what you get, and uh, I'll give you the solution in just a second. All right, so I hope you guys found that all right. Um, this is the code that I ended up getting. So I created a for loop from zero to n, just like last time. And what I did was if the character i is equal to zero, what we're doing is we're just adding that value 
from weights.get. Remember, the syntax of getting a value from an array list is different from an array. We're doing weights.getI, and I'm adding that value to the left-hand side, and if it's a one, I'm adding that value to the right-hand side, and the return statement was there for us. So if you want to make sure this is working properly, what you can do is you can add a system.out.println, just like this, make sure it's before the return statement, and um, you can, you know, end up trying to print out, like, you know, your value of your left hand side and your right hand side and your subsequent fitness. Uh, you can do that if you like, but that's how you work out the scales fitness or the fitness of your scales function.